Today's Monday. Did we start? It's not Monday. It's, not, it's never Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Tuesday. In the history of the Level 1 News, it's never, never been, been Monday. Monday. You're right. Monday's too busy for things like news. Today is Tuesday, September 4th. September the 4th be with you. Happy happy <laughs> after Labor Day if you're from the USA. USA if you're wearing USA. white, you're trash. Oh, I am wearing white, but it's not technically after Labor Day yet. <laughs> well, we've got a triumvirate of FCC stories this week, none of which will surprise anyone. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you could probably just skip this whole news segment. <laughs> There were, there were a couple, let me summarize this story for you. There were a couple of guys that tried to make a big deal out of a Jeep by surrendering, but in the end, they didn't care either. Yeah, basically, the FCC says that it's, it doesn't have the power to punish the, the uh, Verizon over the firefighter thing. Remember, that's the realm of the FTC, and the FTC is like, well, what are you saying? So they just washed their hands of it. They're like, ah, we can't, that's not our problem anymore. And some senators are mad, but no one's going to do anything about it. <laughs> it's not our job to figure out how stuff works and tell you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to struggle focusing this week because every time I look at the preview monitor, I can just see this terrifying Patrick face <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could cover it up if you want. Oh, okay. that's fine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> woo, RT, the RTX launches imminent. Woo. <clears throat> so, yeah. And uh, they're not going to be responsible for that. Now, when they are responsible for wrongdoing, as we figured out with a Jeep pie, just bending over backwards for Sinclair, guess who gets to decide whether or not they did anything wrong? The FCC. <laughs> there was, there, there was a, an investigation in the FCC to determine if the FCC did anything wrong. Shocker. Nope. The FCC didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> the FCC wrong. determined that the FCC did nothing wrong. <sighs> There was some pretty good evidence against him, really suspicious timings, but they said, no, no, it's fine. Now, ultimately, the merger didn't happen, so I guess maybe if it had, they would have tried a little harder, but I, I kind of doubt it. <laughs> if some other group would have been involved to investigate, maybe, but since the merger didn't happen, no one cares. And the other follow-up about the FCC is we've had this ongoing dilemma of what constitutes competition. Now, the last time we checked in with this, it was two, or was it three? It was two. two. So if you had two ISPs in an area, that was considered competitive. And anybody with you know an IQ in the triple digits or above 70 <laughs> looked at that and was like, really? Two is competition? Well, you're going to love this one. One is competition. Remember, we reported on that, but the U.S. Court of Appeals said that uh, the FCC can actually define a single ISP area as competitive because theoretically, another ISP could move in. But the reality is that no, another ISP can't move in. Look at how tooth and nail uh, Atlanta, uh, Louisville, uh, Kansas City, etc. has fought against Google moving fiber service into their area. So, yeah. And that's Google. Google has a war chest of billions of dollars and they can't move in stuff. So, there's not a lot of news this week. So, we're... This. The brass tax there is a half mile. You have to have a competitor within a half mile of your service radius. And so the thinking is... <laughs> just one. Like, <laughs> if these smaller ISPs just worked a little harder, <laughs> and they could move into that area, and everything would be fine. So, How many houses? If you, you're in the house hunt. You've looked at a lot of houses. I would wager that 98% of the houses that you've looked at are within a half a mile of some type of service. Probably, yeah. There's, and, there's and, one where the price just dropped. And it's perfect. It's the perfect house. It's the house I've always dreamed of. But there's no, <laughs> no internet. And they're not interested in running any more internet. That so much has like that has become like a meme where now like that's a word. You've been rhymed out of a house when there's, no <laughs> there's internet exactly service. one person using that word and it's, it's you. me. <laughs> but it's gonna catch on. You're trying to make it just a thing. like just like fetch is gonna happen for Gretchen. Uh, well, we talked about uh, the, the DEF CON hackers and voting machines and all that nonsense last week. And this is, a, this is a very convoluted story. Even after reading it, it's kind of like... Do I understand what happened? I, well, I feel like... For, I think what it boils down to is the Justice Department wants to guarantee that this is always a federal case, essentially. Uh -huh. So that's why... But they're saying they might not be able to pro prosecute voting machine hacking because of the wording of the law. But they've prosecuted like 
Raspberry Pi hacking. <laughs> the, the wording of the law says connected to a network, and voting machines aren't connected to networks. So they're like, well, we need to refine the law. Uh, it was unauthorized computer access, and they, they've definitely prosecuted things like you yeah. know, unauthorized access to like school computers and stuff like that. Yeah, they, there were a couple of cases they cited where there was definitely no network access, and they used these laws. But it seems like if you read between the lines, those could be state cases in some case if they sort of prove that this wasn't federal. And the federal always wants to be in charge of these voter cases. Mm, that doesn't smell suspicious at all. They also pointed out that many of those voting machines are connected via modem mm. to so they can fetch the results after it's done, which would count, right? Krista broke the table. I was in the chair in the wrong spot. Not prepared. Wow. It's as if you rolled in at the last possible moment and actually 20 minutes late. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, we've talked about IP addresses. Are you... Defined by your IP address? My IP address defines me. Well, not according to the appeal court, which has ruled on... This has been appealed several times. <laughs> but this has to do with someone who was hosting a file or was accused... It was, it's an Adam Sandler movie. And, oh, downloading, not hosting. That's interesting. This is apparently like an old folks' home, too, which tells you that like they're going... like. Well, who else watches Adam Sandler movies? I mean, but the lawyers involved were like, we're going to get that old folks' home. <laughs> yeah, so... They rule, as they should, that your IP address cannot be the sole thing that identifies you, especially in these copyright cases. I think this would not have gone that way had it not been an old folks' home, because literally there's a ton of old folks in the old folks' home or adult foster care or whatever it was. But if this was like your house, I think the judge probably would have done it, probably would have gone a different way. But there's literally dozens of people that this could have been, which is mm -hmm. not reasonable. Maybe, but I think they do still consider that when it comes to, uh, like, swatting people. Yeah. So, that's kind of a weird ruling. Of course, that that's way before court ever gets involved. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not like, they pretty much just do what they want. Well, how about on the topic of great justice? Justice has finally been served, and the final offender in one of the greatest crimes, was it 2016 or 2017? It, 2016. No. I yeah, think. it was a long time ago. It was Jennifer Lawrence's nudes. <laughs> it wasn't just hers, though. There's lots yeah. of other people. How lots would you of feel? They, they mentioned some of the other girls that were in this. How would you feel if you were one of those girls and you don't even get the headline? <laughs> I think that was the way it was from the start, though. Like, all they ever talked about was Jennifer Lawrence's nudes. Hmm. It, uh, there was a. Uh... There was something. There was a meme name for this. The fapping. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Which is terrible, but also I mean, the creativity <laughs> of people in Fortune is pretty, just never ending. hilarious. So there were four people involved. Three have already been sentenced, and this was the last guy. He got eight months. That was that. That meme wouldn't have even made sense if it wasn't for M. Not Shyamalan making a movie that no one understood. Eh. I mean, that still could have been a fine meme. I'd say more also people. A 1960s art movement. <laughs> more, pe more people know about the, the league's nudes than they do that movie. Oh yeah. yeah. So maybe I bet he got like some extra views on his movie that month. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Thinking it was part of what, what is this like all about? <laughs> is Jennifer Lawrence in this? How crazy would it have been if M. Night Shyamalan put those hackers up to that in the first place? Like that would have been the, the case of the century. That would have been what the ultimate twist? Shyamalan twist. <laughs> IRL involved. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Is he still making movies? It's a piece of uh, performance art, similar to a happening. Maybe. <laughs> what if those girls were also involved? We are on fire today. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we've talked about the. Uh, there was the child porn iPhone case where they were compelled to give up their passcode. I think that guy's still in jail in Florida. Held in contempt, and then there was another one that was similar to that, and. Uh, was there? I think there might have been a Facebook one in the U.S. But anyway, in the U.S., I think with Facebook, you probably aren't required to give it up. But now in the U.K., with some of these new online laws, you got to give up that Facebook password. See, I read this and I don't understand it because that is a terrible hill to die on. Because you know the the, the police can just call Facebook and say, "Hey, um, we need into, into this account," and it'll happen. Well. I think he's dying on that hill because there's some pretty obvious evidence on Facebook that he killed this girl mm. or at least lured her into this location. Mm. And knew her. And yeah, yeah. Well, they her. know he knew her because he worked with the family somehow. 
But anyway, this they suspect this guy of killing this girl. I, I guess this is a Lucy McHugh. It's a famous case in the UK. I hadn't heard of it before. Had you? No. But uh, he claims he's not giving them his Facebook data because there's evidence of cannabis use on it. Which, aren't you kind of admitting cannabis? Just by saying, by saying it? it? Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. So they don't have the uh, the Fifth Amendment. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's sad, but the, again, this is one of those situations where I bet that guy that didn't give up his Apple password had child porn on the phone. Mm. And I bet this guy's the killer. <laughs> so it really hurts the yeah. freedom movement. Well, the, the encryption on the phone, you know, that might actually protect the data, but your Facebook password doesn't protect diddly squat. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't realize that. Now, when I say to you, if you want to show pride and homosexuality, what is the best thing that you could do in order to show that pride? And the answer is always going to be the same thing. Objectively, this is the best way to do it. Buy Apple products. Right? <laughs> I wonder where you were going with that. That's how you do that. Well, in Russia, <laughs> it's not so easy. Apple has blocked it. It's just a watch face. It's literally just a rainbow watch face. Now you can't get this band either. Oh, okay. See the special? Yeah, so it, like it's a continuous loop It matches there. up. Uh, so you can't get that in Russia because... You cannot. It is uh, it's blocked in the OS in Russia. You cannot use the gay pride... Watch face. They put negative space between the bands of color. Does that mean something different, or like you could argue with a Russian official if you didn't want to, you know, if you didn't care about dying, that that's not actually gay pride. That's just a rainbow stripe. But it is literally like named the gay pride. Oh. Uh, and I think when you buy the band, a portion of the proceeds go to some advocacy group charity okay. thing. This is for sure what this is about. <laughs> There's no like yeah. denying if that's what it's. But about. the Russians aren't having it. They don't like it. They don't want it. And well, Apple wants to do business in Russia. This well, is the cost of doing business. It's just like the Chinese thing, you know. But but Apple is you know doing this signaling. They're like, oh, you know, we love the LGBTQ. We're doing this for them. Unless the Russians tell us not to, and then uh, uh, you're out in the case, cold. No, we're not doing that. And see, I see stuff like this, and I have to really wonder about the whole Apple and the FBI encryption, like Apple dying on the. See, this is a really big point in favor of Apple not actually caring about customers' encryption and just wanting that international market. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, not just the international market, but even locally, they get that reputation of like, oh, Apple's going to go to bat for me. I can trust their encryption. A Apple's not going to go to bat for you if you're gay, apparently. Well, in America they will, but... No, not in Russia. <laughs> not in Russia. <laughs> no wonder, company will. wonder what the how they feel about that in China. <laughs> I guess they're okay with it. Uh -huh. Literally nothing is allowed. No encryption and <laughs> definitely no rainbows. I think uh, Tracer from Overwatch, she's gay in the in the actual comics and stuff, but like in Russia they didn't release any of those comics. But I, I think they were released everywhere else. Uh -huh. They were translated for China and, and everywhere else. Hmm. Just Russia that banned it. It is a weird thing to... Do you really think that it prevents homosexuality or does that just make people more attracted to it? If the state is against it. Maybe that's why China's given up. China is like, we don't, you know, you can do that. That's fine. Don't make a big spectacle out of it. But don't compare a president to Pooh Bear. <laughs> don't make a spectacle out of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just don't wear the watch band. Keep it in the bedroom. Uh, well, you know what you won't find in the bedroom or anywhere else, apparently, uh -huh. is the Venezuelan cryptocurrency, the Petro. <laughs> We've always made fun of this, but I, things are getting real dicey in Venezuela. So if anybody's watching from Venezuela, I don't. Good, I don't know how you're watching. From good Venezuela. luck. Yeah, I don't. This is it's really scary stuff. There's in a, in a modern developed world, there's no reason for the people in Venezuela to endure what they're enduring, other than just literal insanity. So the Petro is, according to Maduro, it's out there. They're using it. It's backing the 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 new currency that they brought out. So Reuters did some investigation. They went. To Venezuela, there's this one section of the country where apparently all that that new oil is, and that it's like five mile radius, and that's the oil that backs the petro. So they went there, and they were like, "Where's the petro?" And it's just like a little rundown. I've actually got uh, some pictures of it here. <laughs> Roy, look at that single cow. It's like one oil dairy. <laughs> this is a. Uh, like a, a, a fish farm that's been abandoned. Oh. And filled with dead fish. 
I think they had a picture of a mule. Maybe it was the video. But anyway, they couldn't find the, the people were like, we don't, we've never heard of that. What's no, cryptocurrency? You can't spend it here. No one's drilling for oil here. We don't know what's going on. We're starving. Could you give us some food? <laughs> and there's oh. the biggest crypto exchange in Venezuela doesn't trade it. Mm. There are a couple that claim to, but when they tried to actually like open an account and find them, it turns out they probably don't exist. So yeah, interesting that their currency is now based on something that for the most indicators point to just not existing at all. But they've got oil. Well, they can't get out of the ground though. But well, that's they need to hire somebody like the United States to come in and give them freedom and, <laughs> and equipment. Give them freedom. You don't even have to hire them. <laughs> just open up that airspace. <laughs> uh, well, that's it's a milestone. For Venezuela, changing their currency, even if that doesn't exist. And you know what else is a milestone that every automated car company must face? It's like a it's a rite of passage. Your first wreck. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you're a 16-year-old, you first wreck. Well, I, you know, the article couldn't figure out if it was the Apple self-driving car's fault or the other vehicle's fault. It was a Nissan Leaf. Apparently, a Nissan Leaf rear-ended the Apple self-driving car. Does that... What more perfectly encapsulates the hipster nature of 2018 <laughs> the nissan leaf rear-ending the self-driving apple so what happened was the apple was merging and the leaf was only traveling at 15 miles an hour but somehow something went wrong smashed into it and there's quote-unquote significant damage i was reading about uh the the waymos where they're you know they have their automated testing going on and people are apparently furious at the waymos because they're the most conservative drivers on the road. <laughs> and things like merging and turning left and stuff like that, they're so careful. Like turning left on a blinking yellow, they just won't even try. <laughs> so you're stuck behind them a lot of the time. I wonder if... And they probably drive slower. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. they got to get that call center operational so that uh, you know the guy that's in the call center can help it. You know, It's like, okay, we're going to turn left on yellow. It's fine. Well, in the world of robotics, we switched over to robot and AI news in case you didn't notice that. It's in the first episode. How weird is that? Well, it was just the the balance of the stories this week. The news this week is so weird. It's sparse. Mm. (laughs) Sparse. And there's uh, there's not a lot to pick from. (laughs) That's a joke. Fruit picking robots destined to replace seasonal migrant work. I I think this story is BS. And the reason I think this story is BS is because when I went to visit Linus in Canada... There were like blackberry farms everywhere, and there were tons of people picking blackberries. Well, and this so, is in the UK. But this is, yep. Yeah, well, well, and blackberries but, are a totally different type of crop, too. Well, I mean, it's hard to get those uh, South American migrants to the UK. Well, it's Canada, though, too. So, eh, you know, they, mm-hmm. they'll make that trick, you know, fill up a bus. So, here's a picture of this fellow and his robot. So, you see here, this is a special kind of strawberry that hangs low. Yeah. So can't do that. they're practicing mm. on these, but this little arm is supposed to be good at picking them gently. And they have uh, cameras and AI vision systems on here to try to find them amongst the, the leaves and figure out which ones are ripe. I assume yeah, some of those aren't right. Yeah, there's a bunch there that aren't the green ones for sure. And I don't see it here, but apparently they were working on some system where like there'd be one grip that would grip the stem and then the other grip would pluck the fruit rather than like, Pull the whole yeah. thing down. So. It should definitely be something less traumatic than a cherry picker, which basically just grabs the tree by the trunk and shakes, shakes the bejesus it. out of it. They do that with apples, too. Well, I don't think you could do that with a strawberry bush. <laughs> it wouldn't no. care. Just rip it out of the ground. <laughs> what all do they grow in Britain? I've never even thought about that. Well, it mentioned in that article they've been growing more and more there uh, as far as soft fruit, as they call it. Because mm. of their xenophobic import whatevers? I don't know. I think they're just more into farming. You know, better farming techniques. They got that uh, Roundup soaking the land in it <laughs> like we've done for all these generations. Pretty soon it's going to be renamed to Roundup Island. Well, when the Roundup gives us all colon cancer, good news. <laughs> it's 130 nanometers, the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's smallest robot, medical robot. So Look how happy those people look. It's tiny. It is shockingly it's tiny. It's actually in that shot. You can't see it. <laughs> It's just in that guy's bloodstream. So this little guy, uh, it it's a, it's coated with some sort of it's like a just a amorphous blob coated in some kind of other material, and the way that they use a magnetic field causes it to reshape itself. 
Hmm. And that's its means of locomotion. And it really can't do a lot right now. It can corral cells around a little bit, but they're hoping that eventually it'll be able to target cancer cells and maybe destroy them. Neat. So uh, you're not going to go in there and fix anything yet, but it can drive around. It does make you think, I mean, creative endeavors like Fantastic Voyage would have been much more likely in VR. It's like you strap on the VR helmets and then you're, you know, controlling a telepresence robot inside somebody else. A la Fantastic Voyage. Well, this thing, I, I doubt you could put a camera system on it. No, yeah. I mean, but in the future. I was thinking of the episode of Magic School Bus where they <laughs> shrunk the entire class into the tiny school bus and then went through Ralph's bloodstream. See, Magic School Bus just goes away if you just have VR technology. Like, you don't, you just need to strap those kids down, medicate them, stick a helmet on them. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> they don't as learn being as much. afraid of the white blood cells. Yeah, and, and it's funny how the Magic School Bus was uh, air and water tight. You know, I mean, it was just a regular school bus, right? Yeah, like if she had opened the door, would they have drowned? Well, it was an internal combustion engine, and somehow, even without oxygen, it operated. <laughs> well, it was magic. I guess it just ran on magic, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, you know, they say that, you know, the, if advanced enough science, it can't, you can't tell the difference between magic. So imagine if we went back in time to the ancient Greeks, and we showed them a 3D printed barracks <laughs> in just I, 40 hours. I watched the video of this, and the, it was, it, it's... This looks shockingly low tech, but it's effective because they said that it normally takes Marines five days to build a barracks like this out of wood. It is very ugly. Of course, these little striations are because each layer is yeah. printed independently. Uh, but yeah, you think about not only does it take five days to build something out of wood, but uh, you know if you've played Counter Strike, <laughs> you're sleeping in a wood barracks, you might get wall banged. Wouldn't be as much of a problem in uh, concrete. Hopefully. <laughs> I wonder if I made the wall wavy for additional structural support. I don't know. And also, I don't know what they used for a roof. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe but, wood? <laughs> Maybe they just had the Marines, like, put just, lots of wood over it. You know, you could do a lot with a tarp and a couple pieces of wood. So. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it would eventually hold water, but it's not. That's well, not the just, there. No, you could have some, uh, you know, like a tent, like some, some structural supports to like keep a, it. Yeah, some sort of slope. It would, I mean, it's like, oh, my house blew away. Give me a few minutes. Let me print a you know, temporary settlement. While we well, this one was 40 hours. But, <laughs> they, see, it took 40 hours, they mentioned, because they were manually loading the, con the cement. If they had an automated system for that, like a mixer, it would have taken 24 hours. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there was, in, in the video, in the, in the time lapse, it's like, oh, wow, the robot's really going to town. And then, like... 10 minutes of the video is like 12 guys doing something. Mixing and, concrete. And then it's like him. another five seconds of the robot. And then it's like 12 guys doing something. And then, so it needs a little bit more automation. I, I kind of doubt those windows are like, like they, they're not perfect enough. Maybe you'd have to sand them down to get some kind of window structure in there. I think they're just meant to be open. Mm. But that would be an issue that you might not get with wood. Well, when we talk about robots... We talk about, so, you know, the fruit picking robot and the 3D printers, they're cool, but they have limited success. It seems like maybe those aren't areas where robots are just are fully realized. But where we have, we're seeing more and more complete autonomy and super effectiveness is robots that murder fish. <laughs> Last week, we talked about the lionfish murder robot, and it looked like something, you know, your kids would have made in their high school science fair. This thing looks like the real deal. Now, this... Article, ABC Australia, they seem to have forgotten the text. And maybe the images. Hmm. That wasn't like that earlier. No, no, it, it works uh, Friday. But, yeah, so here's a picture of the thing. Now, the other article I read, oh, when this one like didn't have any bot. text, uh, had a picture of what this thing's going after. It's a starfish, and it's got 20 arms, and it's all thorny. It's called the crown of thorns, mm -hmm. and it's a badass-looking starfish. <laughs> so it turns out, this starfish is kind of like a hydra. It can regenerate. So That's true of most starfish. If you, let's say you, you stabbed it or cut it in half or something, you're just making two starfish. You have to kill every arm individually hmm. or it will simply regenerate. But the ranger bot, has, they've discovered that there's a cow bile. It creates a, an allergic response oh. in the starfish. So you poison it, you have to poison all 20 arms. Wow. Cow bile, you hit one, and it creates a, an autoimmune response that kills it in a 20-hour period. 
So not only can we kill the starfish <laughs> in an automated manner, I imagine they suffer greatly. <laughs> oh. For their crimes. <laughs> I, we had a saltwater tank growing up, and we had a starfish, and then we also had a couple yellow tanks. The yellow tang was my favorite fish in the whole aquarium. And one day I woke up and, and the yellow tang was gone because the starfish ate it. <laughs> so this is all that they deserve. <laughs> these starfish eat coral. So the, the, the reefs are being destroyed by these, by these starfish. So this little guy drives around. I imagine it's probably not a huge amount of bile it has to store. So I think it could kill a lot of starfish. I'm yeah. just imagining the future upgrades to this thing. And it's like, good news. We don't have to poison them. They don't suffer anymore. We've built an underwater chipper shredder. Oh. <laughs> you might increase the shark activity. I was going to say, does this have any... I wonder if the cow bile has any effect on other life and we just haven't studied it so we don't know. Well, it injects it into them. So I don't think that it would be... That was the problem with the poison. Yeah. Because it had to use so much that then you sort of contaminated the area. Do you? Uh, do they collect the dead starfish after? Well, it takes 20 <laughs> hours. So probably not. They're big. So that's what I'm saying too. Like, are they just... Out there, will people, well, other fish. I people, think people. something would eventually eat it, right? Yeah. So, like, what if they're allergic to the cow bile? This robot is a lot mm. like an ecological version of the meltdown inspector patches from Intel. It's like it doesn't. We're gonna do an update story next week where it's like horrible death of coral <laughs> because of yeah. cow bile. No, I don't think because cow bile is you know. I don't think you that's know a lot about necessarily bile. a terrible thing. Well, I'm thinking about what if a cow just falls in the ocean. And gets devoured. I don't think that like causes a terrible problem. <laughs> Listen, we don't know. And it, we could be getting a megalodon from this. We there's no way of knowing. Well, you know, it's worth it, and it's in Australia, so we should apply for a government grant. But that is cool that you know <laughs> it's just hunting around murdering fish. The lionfish thing actually floated them to the top. Yeah. So yeah. It, was, it had its little buoys, and it was limited. I think this thing could kill a lot of starfish <laughs> in one. You know, one cycle. fell swoop. Right. They, they had a previous version. They made this one have uh, replaceable batteries and a, a sort of a cartridge for the cow bile. So you can, it'll swim back up, you, you reload it, and boom, right back in there. <laughs> Is cow bile or printer ink more expensive when you have to buy it by the cartridge? Oh, printer ink. I would say the cow, printer ink's more valuable than gold, liquid gold. Yeah. So <laughs> cow bile, yeah, get that anywhere. <laughs> Did you see the, the, the alternate article I read about the Venezuela thing had a link to an article? With a video of Venezuelans stoning a cow because they were starving. Oh. Wow, that was that was hard to watch. I watched it, but you watched it because <laughs> he has no no filter, no like maybe I shouldn't watch this, but he'll do it anyway. That's why you watch the level one news. I can't help he myself. He watches it, so you don't have to. I'm compelled, just like a driverless tractor is compelled to farm. <laughs> this I don't think this is is really news either. It, it is a little bit because. Some of the big, like, John Deere tractors, they've been driverless, for, or not driverless, they've been fully automated for a long time, but they will not operate unless somebody's in the cab. And so it's a real problem, like people listening to music or goofing off on their laptop or whatever, while the tractor is in operation, this is full automation. Have you ever seen the picture of a guy who's in his tractor, and it's a giant field, so he's just driving in a straight line for, you know, like 20 minutes at a time, and he's playing... Farm simulator, <laughs> but I think when we did a story, it's been a, a maybe a year or two ago, early on in the level one news, and it was a driverless tractor, but it was like a real sleek looking futuristic driverless tractor. And I think these, I got a picture here, uh, these are kind of normy looking tractors. Yeah, it looks like they've just retrofit an existing tractor. Yeah, so I think these are cheaper. And the AI has gotten further along. So if like if you want to plow the field, it can just go do that. And you don't really have to watch it. You know, unless you have pets. <laughs> Speaking of plowing the field and sowing seeds of dissent, let's talk about trolls. Turns out all the major companies are looking to AI. You know, Facebook has really talked about this a lot. They want AI to stop the trolls. But it turns out AI is not really good at Figuring that out. You can't How stop could it them. be? Yeah, you just can't. Oh, there's uh, probably once a week we're in the moderator's lounge discussing, like, is this new account a bot or not? We can't even, <laughs> we can't tell. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of the trolls, a lot of the best trolls, you can't, like, if English is not your primary language, you would not know that you're being trolled. The Tom's yeah. Hardware video on the NVIDIA graphics yard where it was like, you should just buy it, that might have been a troll. 
Now the perspective AI from Google, we've talked about that in the past. That was a fun thing we played with. You could type sentences and it would rate them for toxicity. But it's easy for that one to get false positives. And they give you this little chart here. So if you say something like, this food is fucking amazing. It doesn't know that that's not a troll comment. You know, you're saying something it just positive. Says, it sees the swear word and thinks. But oh, you can see here it goes from a point zero two to a point six eight in in badness score. I'm sixty eight percent sure that's a troll. Yeah, so it would flag that, and you wouldn't be able to say it. So if you were commenting, if you were writing a, a review on a, what's the name of that restaurant review site? Yelp. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're writing a Yelp review. And you say this food is fucking amazing, and they're employing the Google Perspective API. No. That review might get rejected. Kind of like what people have been experiencing with the demonetization algorithm, where it seems random and arbitrary. <laughs> the result might be that. So, yeah. You're going to have to have boots on the ground. You're going to have to have blue hair in a seat in order to properly... <laughs> That's the hard thing out. to convince people of that, too. Like, when you're in a meeting with them, it's like, no, someone has to monitor this. No. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. no, we're just going to do it all automated. Well, we've talked about what robots are good at and what they're not good at. But are there some things that they shouldn't be allowed to do that maybe it's wrong to let the robots do? Well, one senator thinks so. He has a very interesting uh, fear about robots. Jeff Flake's beer bot budget amendment cuts funding for robotics research for robots that make beer, but there there aren't any robots that make beer. Well, sir, there most certainly are. You must not have read this one. <laughs> there, this is the MIT beer bot. <laughs> of course. So MIT created. They had a project where they wanted to take like warehouse and production systems, and take an arbitrary example and show how unconnected machines could learn to work together. And the example they used was beer manufacturing. So they created these bots that package beer that had just come off an assembly line or a production, you know, bottle it, package it, whatever. And they made it overwhelmingly obvious in the write-up. It's like, you could apply this to any warehouse. We use beer as an example because it's fun and exciting and people <laughs> like it. Well, this guy, he doesn't like that. So he actually wrote into a budget bill that no robot should be used for beer purposes. That's really horrifying. <laughs> That's going to get passed, too, because it's in the budget. Wow. So, some brewer just got screwed. <laughs> I was real excited about that. This will save the business. Yeah. That's not good for states that actually... Was that in, like, Wisconsin? Because I would feel bad if it was in Wisconsin. Um, I was probably in Massachusetts. Because what he's complaining about, and I, I sort of understand this, is... Uh, of Arizona, Jeff Flake of Arizona. Well, they're going to be making any beer in Arizona anyway. So. He, what he's complaining about is wasted funding, right? Because somebody gave MIT money to study robot automation. On one hand, you can make the argument of the whole like moon landing leading to huge innovation, right? On the other hand, you have to remember that we operate at a massive deficit every year. So, the money we gave to study the beer bots was borrowed with interest <laughs> that the American people are going to have to pay back someday. So, are they though? Would you uh, <laughs> would you borrow money at interest to do beer research? Can like Venezuela or Mexico or somebody pay it back instead? Like, is that a thing? What are they going to? Well, they're going to pay it back with their oil eventually. I'm sure. Yeah. Once Australia enough. paid for the the mass eradication of those starfish. Well, that's true, but. Their, the coral reef is a big part of their tourism. So that That's makes sense. True. It's true. I guess, is beer part of ours? Not really. <laughs> There's so many breweries everywhere. But, I but we do so. heavily tax alcohol because it's a vice. So we could get returns on that. And recently, sugar soda. That's getting taxed to death, too. You know, they studied in, uh, was it Philadelphia where that happened? Oh, I can't remember. So the, it worked. Sugar, Seattle was one place. Sugar soda intake went way down, but alcoholic beverages went way up. <laughs> so <laughs> people stopped buying soda and started buying beer and liquor. Oops. Maybe they just needed the soda for mixers, and then they were like, well, the alcohol. Too. <laughs> Might as well just get the good stuff. 
All right, our final story. Uh, this was more exciting as a headline than the reality. <laughs> That's a, what's a, there's a good picture that I would not stay here. I've seen this. Oh yeah, you're afraid of raptors. I've yeah. seen this. I've seen this hotel before a couple of times. They had different robotic greeters and stuff, but by far the robotic greeters were the most popular. This is a bad crop on this image because you can barely see their little bellboy hats. <laughs> yeah. That's the best part. This is a, a robotel, but instead of like just plain robot staff. They're they're dinosaurs. That's it. That's the gimmick. Well, just the greeters. Yeah. And it turns out you use a a tablet. You don't talk to them. So wow, they're snobby too. <laughs> well, but, they don't have any lips. How would they talk to you? <laughs> well, they have little speakers. Uh, didn't you see Jurassic Park three? They they make a noise through that bone in their head. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually haven't. But they it's, also, not, it's not a good one. It's not based on any of Crichton's books. My name is Doug, and I love you. Yeah. There's a little... Uh, Except more terrifying. A little ball-shaped robot in every room, too, that will help you with you know your needs while you're in the room. I'm sure that in Japan we can find a Hatsune Miku hotel as well, where oh, you I'm go sure in your room exists. and there's the... Little um, anime girl. <laughs> yeah. There to help you. How, how much per hour to spend time with her? I, I would say that it depends on a lot of factors. <laughs> uh, Some bad ones, maybe. Well, yeah. So if you want to experience this, this chain of hotels is uh, the translation of the name of them is weird. So <laughs> they're actually going for a weird experience in their hotels. So if you want to get weird, head to Japan, stay with these people. I think that's just true. John. You could have just ended that sentence with <laughs> go to Japan. That's so racist, Kristen. It's not racist. That was that was one of the really funny things in um, that I think it's going to be true much so, much sooner rather than later. In, in altered carbon, the, there are AI hotels, and everybody just learned to stay away from the AI hotels because it's basically the Google Google algorithm given consciousness. So imagine the Google algorithm learning everything that it possibly can about you, and then basically just stalking you, and then making you feel bad for not staying there or using its services or doing literally anything it can to get you to do stuff. So that'll probably happen. You should go down years. to the hotel bar. Yeah. 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 Go, go use the swimming pool. <laughs> I see you're weeping into your pillow. Wouldn't a drink make you feel better? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the hotel AI is like, oh, I'm a psychologist. Would you like some you know, mood-altering drugs to make you feel better? <laughs> now that would be a popular hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be. exactly. exactly so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as we warned, a little short on news this week. So that's the end of episode one. See you tomorrow.